Hi, my name is Mark Lane. I'm the owner of First Call House Buyers. First of all, I just wanted to say welcome to my site. Thank you for coming. You know, you probably uh, got one of my flyers, maybe a business card, maybe even a referral uh, to my site. So again, I just want to say thanks and welcome. Um, you know, I'm really putting this video together to show you how you can start making some really good part-time income just by bringing me properties. I'm looking to buy a significant amount of homes this year and I really need people's help like yourself to bring me these kind of properties. Now again in this video I'm just going to explain to you exactly how, what kind of properties to look for, uh, what, what to bring me, and how to go about doing it so that you can go back to this video anytime you want, you know, pull up my website, go back to the video, and uh, refresh yourself. That way you, you never have to really you know, ask me questions and, and think about how to do it again. So again, uh, you know, you're going to be able to earn $500 on every single property that I close on. Now that's, you know, it's not going to go up, it's not going to go down, it's $500 every single time, but it's as many as you can bring me it, that I close on. So as long as the seller agrees and I agree to buy and we close that transaction, you get paid $500 and I'll have record of all of your information so that, you know, I can get a hold of you and pay you that $500 check each and every single time. So it doesn't matter if you bring me, if I can do 10 or 20 a month that you bring me, then that's how many times you'll get paid $500. Or if it's once a month, that's, you know, it just depends on how the deal happens, you know, how many we can get closed. Now just a, just a fair, fair warning, I can usually close, I can, I can usually end up buying about one in 10, two in 10, you know, it's usually in the 10 to 20% range of whatever deals come my way. So I certainly can't buy every single deal because they're just not, most of the deals aren't good enough for me to be able to buy. But I will try my hardest. You know, it's just all about how that deal gets structured, what the seller's uh, willing to sell for. You know, it just kind of depends on how that deal evolves. So anyway, let's, uh, let's jump right into this so I can explain kind of, you know, how to go about finding these kind of vacant properties, okay? So again, a, a bird dog is what your terminology is. That's somebody that's actually out scouting properties. And same thing for a hunter, you know, they've got their, their bird dogs are out trying to scout the birds. Well, in this case, it's a bird dog is out trying to scout the real estate. So you're out trying to find me properties that I can buy. Uh, the, one of the biggest signs for a vacant or abandoned house is overgrown grass. Now, sometimes that grass can be you know, an extra few inches up to you know, a foot or two tall. Um, but you'll certainly start to notice this as you're driving around, especially in the spring and in the summer. You'll notice that you know, those lawns that start to look overgrown and don't seem to match the neighborhood. Those are ones you want to look out for. Uh, code violations. You know, in the summertime, you have code violations of you know, the grass not being mowed or uh, you know, the house not being taken care of. In the, in the winter time, sometimes that's the uh, the driveway that's not you know that's not plowed, or the sidewalk the sidewalk that's not shoveled. Um, those are code violations, and sometimes you'll see the you know the, the yellow door hanger, or the sometimes it's a blue slip or pink slip on side of person's uh, person's door or window. Those are code violations, and so as a longer a house sits there, the more code violations will get built up, and sometimes you'll see one, two, or three stickers on the door on the window. So again, those code violations are something to look out for. Uh, newspapers and phone books. As a house that's vacant and is abandoned, sometimes it'll have, it'll, you know, that person will not, will not have canceled their newspaper subscription. And so oftentimes there'll be you know, newspapers piled up you know, on the front step or on the, you know, the front deck. Uh, also a phone book. A phone book or two or three, you know, or shoppers that are there. You know, as that stuff starts to pile up, it just shows a sign that somebody's not bringing that stuff inside. So, again, look for those newspapers. Look for the phone book laying on the side. Uh, distressed properties. Now there's obviously several distressed properties out there that are not vacant or abandoned. Now, I might still be able to buy those, but I want you to focus on trying to find the vacant and abandoned houses. Now, a, a distressed property can sometimes be vacant and abandoned, so I just kind of want you guys to start paying attention to that kind of thing. And as you start to look for those distressed properties, a lot of times they will also be vacant and abandoned, and you'll just 
and you, as you go on and you kind of start to look for this kind of thing, you'll get that sixth sense, then, and you'll just kind of know that, yes, it's, it's a vacant property. Uh, boarded up windows and doors, this kind of goes along with distressed. But oftentimes, you know, there'll, there'll be the, you know, the windows that are boarded up. I've even seen front doors boarded up or the garage door boarded up. So again, as you start to see these things, most, you know, most uh, good neighborhoods, single family homes, and, you know, they're not going to have doors and windows boarded up. So when you see that, it should be kind of an instant sign that there's something going on. And so whether it's vacant or banded or not, I would say send me that address because I want to see what's going on with it. Uh, last, the, the, no lights, no cars, no traffic. If you see a property that you're driving by on a regular basis and you, there's never any lights on, there's never any cars in the driveway, there's never any people walking in or out, playing in the yard or anything like that, you know, you'll just start to notice this kind of stuff and again, that might be a good sign that it's a vacant property. So, again, just you know, you just kind of want to keep an eye on all this stuff on a regular basis, and take different routes to work. Um, you know, as you take take your kids to school, take a different route to school. You know, whatever it, whatever it takes. Um, you know, every day you should be able to find one or two vacant properties if you take a different route. Uh, so, you know, they they actually say that. Uh, throughout a full day of driving around, you can actually come across between 50 to 100 different vacant and abandoned properties. So that's a huge potential to make extra income, okay? So again, I just want you to be able to, you know, write those addresses down when you drive by. When you get home, you're gonna hop on the computer, get on my site, you're gonna go, go to the you know, little box below and you're gonna be able to enter the, all that information and send that to me. That's gonna go straight to my email. Now that's gonna capture all of your information too so that there's never any overlapping. It's going to tell me that this property came from you and not from somebody else. So you're going to be the one to get the credit even if somebody else tries to bring it to me because that's already going to be logged in. Okay. One other way I want to show you, another way I want to show you to bring me properties is called writing letters of intent. A letter of intent is kind of like a purchase agreement on a piece of real estate. So with a letter of intent, what you're doing is you're getting a real estate agent. And this could be somebody that you know, or it could be somebody that, you know, you can get a hold of a realtor out of the phone book or off a sign. You know, that's, that's up to you. I'm not, I'm not getting into that kind of education right now. But a letter of intent is non-binding. That means that you cannot be legally bound to that contract. A letter of intent just means that you or somebody that you're involved with intends to purchase this if they agree to your price. Okay, so if you're writing an offer of letter, you know, you're writing a letter of intent on a property that's listed at 100,000, you're writing a letter of intent to purchase for 60,000, that doesn't mean if you get accepted, it doesn't mean that you're legally bound to purchase it. What that means is now you have interest from the seller that they want to sell their property for that price. Okay, when that happens, then you send that property to me right away and then we'll get involved and I'll try to purchase that property and you'll get the credit for it. So when it comes to a letter of intent, again, non-binding contract, you're not bound to it, you can write as many as you want and you can never get in trouble for it. Um, we want to target properties that are 180 days on the market or older, okay? And the reason for that is, after, you know, once it gets to about the 180 days mark, at least in this market right now, that means that that seller is starting to question their property, they're starting to question their real estate agent, they're starting to question their price, they're starting to get really frustrated with why their house isn't selling. And oftentimes, if their house hasn't sold in 180 days, that means there's probably a reason for that in the first place. It, it usually means that the house needs some work or it may be too high priced, but it usually has something to do with the, the house itself, the people don't want it, otherwise somebody would have bought it in that amount of time. So 180 days is the marker you want to go for. Now when you talk to your realtor and you, you, know, you say, hey, I need you to send me an offer on, or excuse me, I need you to send me a list of all the properties in such and such price range for 100 days, 180 days on the market or older, okay? And when she sends you that list, that's what it will show. Now, the ones that you really want to target on there are the ones that say vacant. 
you know, under the owner occupy, it'll say owner or it will say vacant. You really want to write those letters of intent on the vacant properties. Now, if your realtor sends you the list and it doesn't show that, you need to tell them that you need to see the listing where it shows if it's a vacant property or if it's owner occupied, okay? Because that's going to be a huge factor in getting some of these deals. Now, in the, in the Des Moines market, we're going to be targeting mostly 100,000 and under. If you want to target properties over 100,000, that's totally fine. Again, this is non binding. So if you get some, you write a letter of intent on a property that's 225,000 um, you know, and they have an interest, we'll certainly look at that. Okay, so there's, there's no limit. It's just that usually in that, in, with something that's been on the market that long, is going to be in the lower price range that somebody just doesn't want. Okay, and those are the ones that we can go in and buy for 50 cents on the dollar. Okay, so just to make this really easy on the math, anything that's basically 50,000 to 100,000, you're going to write a letter of intent with the purchase price of 60% of that listed price. Okay, and then if it's 10,000 up to 50,000, you're going to write the letter of intent with, with an offer of 50% of the listed price. So if, it, if it's listed at, let's say, 50,000, you're gonna write an offer on it of 25,000, all right? And a lot of times it's, you know, they might, it might be listed for, you know, 49.9 or something like that. It doesn't matter, just cut it in half, write the offer, a letter of intent, okay? So again, as you're, there's gonna be a PDF download on my site right underneath this video where you know you can download this letter of intent you can print off as many as you want and you know have your realtor send you that list and make those offers that's all it takes you know you, you can do I mean I say do as many as you possibly can because I want the deals um, but you can do you know five a week you can do ten a week you know, 20 a month you know it's totally up to you the more uh, the more offers you make the more deals you submit to me, the more deals we'll get. Real estate is 100% a numbers and volume game. So the more deals you send to me, the more deals we'll get. So that's about it. Again, you've got letter of intent, and we're scouting for vacant and abandoned properties. So send me those deals, 500 deals, or excuse me, $500 on every single deal that we get, that we get accepted and we close on, you get paid for. Fill out the information, it'll come my way, and I'll be in touch with you soon. Thank you.